and that data can actually be utilized by the organizations to make some better product or services for their customer. And one such example is a Google search engine, a very simple one. What do you think is the difference in a Google search engine, what you see recently versus what you used to use, let's say five years back. Nowadays, Google search engine provide you with smart recommendations. The moment you start typing something on, on Google, you have auto suggestions, right? You have better, better Google chlorals or web chlorals, which help you in terms of doing a best match. You also have certain, you know, certain uh, text analytics being used over there in terms of your search engine optimizations, image optimizations, image identifications, and so on. You have the tools like Google Eye and all that stuff, which is available where you don't even have to search anything. You can just, if you have an image of something, what you are looking for, you can just use that image to basically figure it out what exactly is that. All this thing happened, not just because the world is changing very dynamically, but because there was a lot and lot of data which was supporting in terms of making this business decisions that I need to go back and give an auto search or auto suggestion option to my customer. I should go back and give a an Google Eye option to my customers and so on. Another very classic example of how data is being changing lives, you know, across various domain on a day to day basis is the way we purchase. Or if I have to simplify, let's take the retail market. I believe sooner or later, at any point of time, you guys would have gone on, on you know, a uh, uh, big bazaar, or you would, I, you guys would have gone to big bazaar. You would have purchased from. Amazon Flipkart, you would have done, you know, you would have done shopping in some of the, some of the tier two famous retail shops like, you know, Pi Electronics or might be Reliance Digital or something like that. All these locations, or I would rather say all these outlets uses data analytics to a very great extent in terms of making life easy for their customer. Let me give you an example. Can anybody tell me what kind of an analytics do you think Big Bazaar will be using? Let's talk about that. I think more or less you guys definitely would have shopped on Big Bazaar or you go to Big Bazaar or you buy things from Big Bazaar and so on. What do you think? What kind of an analytics do you think Big Bazaar will be using? Customer shopping preference and how, what do you mean by customer shopping preference? How do they use customer shopping preferences? What they do, what, what they normally do with those, the product they choose. So what they do with that? You're very close to it, but what they normally do with that? Customer buying discounts, okay, not really. They procure more, okay. They use this inventory management, okay. What else? The need. They give us buy one, get one free. Exactly. So yes, more of this, most of this retail organizations uses a data analytics algorithm known as a market basket analysis, or which we also call it as association product bundling by using association rule. Now, most of these organizations understand the purchase patterns of their customers by analyzing their transactional data. And we are not talking about one transactional data, two transactional data. We are talking about millions and millions of transactions, which happens across various outlets of Big Bazaar in, in India. Now, by analyzing that data, organizations like Big Bazaar and so on, identify, is there a scope of bundling a product together to increase the overall purchase value of my customers? And that's the whole concept. They wanted to somehow increase the purchase value of their customer, which basically means if I'm able to attract my customer to buy something which he or she was not even looking to purchase for, I'm done with my job. 
I was able to increase their productivity or I was able to increase their purchasing power. And a similar kind of an experiment also happens in an online shopping environment of, of Flipkart or Amazon. You guys would have definitely seen a couple of things which comes from Amazon. Like when you purchase on Amazon or when you go and buy things from Amazon, you would have seen there is something known as the people who purchase this has also purchased this. There is something known as people or the products bought together. So let's say if I'm going to search for phone and I select any phone on Amazon, let's say I, I picked up a phone over here. And the moment I go down to this phone, I see people or I see Amazon giving me a kind of an kind of an identification over here at the bottom that you know one second yeah product related to this items or there was an option of people who purchase this bought together where is that option of brought together okay i think that was in flipkart let me just open one phone And on this product, yes, you may be interested in this. And there is also something known as similar product. And there is also something known as bought together, which basically means people who bought this particular product also have a tendency to buy the headphones, which, which may be a Realme Bud A3, which may be OnePlus, you know, Bullet Wireless Z2, and so on. You would be surprised to know that during any big million sales or during any, any sales on Flipkart and Amazon, 40% to 60% of the sales revenue is driven by the products which are suggested over here in the suggestions, which basically means 40 to 60% of the revenue by the customer is generated by buying those products which was suggested by Amazon or Flipkart, which they were not actually looking forward to buy at all. And that's where the whole power of data science comes into picture. That's where the whole analysis of your purchase history, your purchase patterns comes into picture to make sure that you guys or, or the customer, we can suggest something which he or she could be benefited with. And at the same time, it can also increase the purchasing power of my customer, which ultimately results in a more revenue for me as an organization. And that's where all these concepts of product bundling, buy one, get two free, buy two, get one free, buy a five kg atta, get a half kg sugar free, and so on comes into picture. All these things does not happen just by chance or just by the fact that you know, the, the, the store manager walked up one day morning and said, okay, let's sell half kg sugar with, with two kg atta free today. That doesn't happen that way. There is a scientific method. There is, a, there is an algorithm which helps them to understand which product need to be bundled with which product and sell it. That's a very live example of data analytics in a normal, in a normal retail scenario. There n number of such examples from various domains you would be surprised to know that most of the domains which consume data science or data analytics are basically from completely known technical side for example bfsi banking and finance organizations they consume data analytics to a very very large extent and what they do with data analytics. In big organizations might be like an ICIC bank, Access Bank, or any nationalized bank, they use data analytics to create financial product which can be customized based on the need of each and every individual. A classic example of that is this. If I go back 10 years and I have to take a personal loan, I have to go through a lot of documentation. 
I have to go to a bank. I have to explain them what is the requirement, why do I need a loan, what kind of a return I need to pay, and so on. And the whole process of personal loan used to take, or by the fact of that, not only the personal loan might be a car loan or a vehicle loan or a property loan or whatever it is, used to take a good 10 to 15 days time, some eight to 10 years back. With analytics coming into picture in BFSI, banks has released something known as pre-approved loans. The moment you log in into your internet bankings, right? You might be having your account in an internet banking. The moment you log in into your internet banking and you go to the tab of services, you could see a section of something known as pre-approved loan. How does it happen? Based on, and, and this data is very confidential and very personalized, right? They do not share this data with anybody else that how much is your monthly transaction, what amount of revenue you are getting in that bank account, what amount of expenditure you are doing from that bank account, how many FDs or RDs you have, and so on. But based on all those data, the algorithm decides what could be the optimal number or what could be the optimal amount which can be given to you as a loan with minimum risk, which means where the risk for you to repay the loan is least. And basis on that, bank come up in your, in your logins saying that you are eligible for two and a half lakh of personal loan. You are eligible for, for five lakhs of car loan, pre-approved five lakhs of car loan and so on. Now, the moment they tag this word known as pre-approved, it basically means you really don't have to worry. You still have to do the documentation part, by the way, but you really don't have to worry to break your head to go and convince the bank. You really don't have to worry about thinking whether my loan will get approved or not, and so on. All you need to do, if your KYCs are already done with the bank, you just need to submit your applications online and you may get your loan in as simple as two to three hours, or in some cases might be in one to two days. That's where the concept of analytics has made life easy in terms of customizing the, uh, uh, you know, the, the customized financial products for each of the customers. So BFSI, a big, big consumer of data analytics. Healthcare, you would be surprised to know Healthcare is an organize or is a, is a sector which is the second largest consumer of data analytics or data science. How many of you have heard about the word known as IBM Watson? Have you heard about this IBM Watson? No? Okay. Initially, Initially, IBM Watson was developed as an AI suggestion, or I would rather say as an AI enabled tool, which can help doctors, nurses, and other technical staff in terms of suggesting the best possible solution for a disease. And based on that best possible solution for the disease, people go back or doctors go back and suggest you the treatment. Now this AI tool was actually feeded with tons and tons, or I would rather say a very million and million medical records, medical histories, and based on those medical histories, all possible solutions. So when I go for a, when I go for a, you know, a kind of a simple diagnosis, I give my report to the doctor, Doctor feeds my symptom in the symptom or sorry, in, in this tool. And the tool suggests me with the probability that there is a probability that 80% you may have a viral fever. And there might also be a probability that 20% you may also have COVID. Now, based on these probabilities, doctor go back and say, okay, shall we go ahead and do the test or shall we go ahead and start the treatment? What treatment to start? what kind of an medicines or things to be avoided for what kind of an allergies and so on. 
this has actually become a tool, one of the tool in healthcare industry, which is suggesting or which is being used not only by the doctors, but it is also being used by operational teams of hospitals to understand what number of optimal bad beds they may require down the line one year, when a person is expected to discharge, what is the kind of an approximate waiting time a person has to wait on the counter to complete the formalities and so on. All these things has helped a lot in terms of understanding the behavior of your patients and then giving them the best services. And now the days are not far when the same tool will also be used for something known as a self diagnostic centers. Now, what is the meaning of the word self diagnostic centers? There are medical centers coming up across India. Let's assume I wanted to, I wanted to do a blood testing, right? I rather than going to a diagnostic center, I go to a chaos. Now, what do you mean by the chaos? A chaos is nothing but a kind of an, like an ATM box. You know, you, you might have seen the room inside which the ATM is kept. It's such a big room. That's all. There is a machine. I go over there. I insert my card, which could be a debit card or a credit card with a sufficient balance. I select the kind of a test I want to perform. So I tell, select, you know, the complete blood test. I select the, the diabetic test and this on. And then I just place my finger, you know, under, under the kiosk to take my blood sample. The blood sample goes into analysis and I get my report. I get my report in as soon as less than five minutes in whatever the test I have, I have selected. Of course, not all the tests can be performed over there, but yes, majority of the tests, which do not require a lot of waiting time period, which do not require to process your samples after a certain interval of time can definitely be performed from there. You get your report, you get your total amount. The moment you press OK, the amount get debited from your bank or your ATM card, and you get the printout of your report. You walked out with the printout of your report with certain suggestions that which parameter of your reports are high and which parameter of your reports are low. That saves a lot of time for the people like me who wanted to do a regular health checkup, but doesn't have a time to wait and go stand in the queue in a diagnostic center, give a sample, come back, and then wait for one or two days to get the report. That's where the analysis or data science is becoming so aggressively in, in healthcare industry to make, make I can give you tons and tons of such examples. There is hardly any domain which do not use data analytics. And how does it all happen? In the initial stage of data analytics, I have a small, I want to use the full presentation. In an initial stage of data analytics, or I would rather say in initial days, Within the organizations, the organizations used to work in silos in each of their analysis process. For example, during the initial phase when data analytics started applying in the industry, organizations, let's say, have marketing department, organizations have finance department, organizations have, let's say, supply chain, and so on, various other departments. Initially, most of the organizations used to say that, okay, I marketing department is being headed by me. I will analyze my own data and I will, from that data, I will generate the inside and I will distribute the inside into the marketing team so that the marketing team can make better decisions. Finance team used to say, hey, I generate a lot of financial data. I will analyze that finance data and then I will I will you know, generate my own insights from that data and make some good, useful financial decisions. So in the initial days, each vertical of an organization used to work on some bits and pieces of data, analyze that bits and pieces of data and make some decision which is relevant to their own vertical. Organizations soon started understanding that this is not going to work for a long time. Why? Because 
collaboration of one department with another department is a key for the progress of any organization how about if there is some useful insights from the marketing data which can help my finance data to make useful decisions or how about if there is some useful insights from the financial data like the purchase power of the customer is a financial data if that insight can help me to make a better marketing decisions so that's where a couple of years back i would rather say some 12 13 years back organizations started working on integrated part of data science data analytics as a horizontal skill or i would rather say as a horizontal department in organizations from that time till now the scenario is completely changed now there is no single no single uh, sorry now there is no individual data science or data analytics teams working on some small small vertical data now what happened each department of an organizations let's say do marketing finance you know the the supply chain hr and so on whatever the data is produced by them goes to the 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 intermediate layer which we normally call it as data analytics layer or data analytics team now this team is responsible in terms of generating analysis from that data generating insights from that data and then sharing the insights with the respective with the respective department or cross departments if they feel that it can help the cross department as well in terms of making decisions now since this architecture has become very popular within the organization each organization is started thinking that why can't i have my own intermediate layer of data analyst data scientist data analytics people who can analyze my entire organization data which is produced from various sources and that's where data analytics has become a very much integral part of any organization and given today i we, we don't see that any organization do not have analytics as the core team analyzing the whole organizational data making some useful insights from it and then sharing the insights with the respective decision makers this has definitely given a lot of boost this has definitely made data analytics a very popular branch across various organizations in various sectors however the challenge remains is that still country and world are deficient or i would say do not have sufficient people who can fulfill this job there is a lot of gap between the requirement of data scientist data analytics people and when i say data scientist and data analytics i mean quality data scientist and quality data analytics people versus what is the opening in the market having said that this gap is increasing every year there is a good amount of openings which uh, which comes in the market every year but since the people do not have sufficient skill to work on various data analytics project some of those openings are never ever filled now this brings to me a very interesting topic so what is that i should learn what is that i should i should expertise myself in terms of becoming a good data analytics person any data analytics person must or should have three core skills and listen me out very carefully a technology you cannot analyze the data without the technology now you will you may argue with me why can't we analyze the data with excel why can't we just use microsoft excel to analyze the data we can do that there is no doubt about it however the volume of the data what we are producing nowadays 
and the variety of the data we are producing. We get the data in a form of image. We get the data in a form of numbers. We get data in form of audio clips, video clips, facial expressions, and so on. All this data cannot be analyzed in Excel. So you need some high-end understanding, or I would rather say you need some good understanding of some high-end tools like maybe Python, R, SAS, to be, to be on a safer side if you do not, do not want to do the coding and all that stuff, and so on. So the technology plays a very critical role in terms of understanding some of the tools, which could be like R, Python, Tableau, Power BI, or, or your, you, know, you, you may have SAS over there as a tool, or you may have Orange 3 as a tool, you may have Scala as a tool, whatever it is on that part. It will make your life easy to start working on the complex data, because when you work in a real-time scenario, data does not come to you just in a form of an Excel files or Excel sheets. It comes to you from different sources, different varieties. And that's where tool is very important. Second, so that's the first core knowledge you should gain if you want to make your career in data analytics. Second, something known as the knowledge of statistics. Now, I, I don't want to include maths over here. People say maths and statistics. No, I don't want to include maths, mathematics, because really, to be honest, we do not use much of mathematics in data analytics or data science. But yeah, we use a lot of statistics. Now, there's a, there's a huge difference between maths and statistics, right, for everyone's knowledge. So how does the statistics help to me? The ultimate goal of any business analytics or any data analytics is to analyze the data by using various algorithms. And most of these algorithms are mathematical or statistical models. So the final outcome which you get, you purely get in a form of a mathematical outcomes. Now, if I do not have a knowledge of statistics, I will not be able to interpret these outcomes. We need to understand core concepts of statistics like hypothesis testing. We need to understand concepts like RMSCs, root mean square error values. We need to understand the concepts like correlation and causations or covariance and so on. So the statistics is a very critical part. If you go back and say that, can I become a data scientist or a data analytics guy without statistics? Answer is no. You may partially become, but you can never be qualified as a data analytics or a data scientist there. So that's the second core which you must know in terms of making your career grow in data analytics field, statistics, knowledge of statistics. Third, and a very important one, is the knowledge of domain. Now this, of course, which we also call it as domain knowledge, cannot be imparted to you through any lectures. You start working in the domains, or you may have some work experience in any of the domain where you were working, and you know how that domain functions. But before I go to that part, let me explain you why domain knowledge is so important. When you analyze the data, data comes from some respective domains, right? You may be analyzing a hospital data, which comes from a healthcare domain. You may be analyzing a banking data, which comes from a BFSI domain. You may be analyzing the customer transaction data, which comes from, you know, which, which comes from uh, 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 what you call uh, the, the retail domain and so on. Until and unless you do not have a good understanding of these domains in which you want to make your career, it will be very difficult for you to understand the data which is produced from there. Let me ask you a simple question. In hospitals or in healthcare, there is a term known as readmission rate. I, I'll put that in my chat window. There is a term known as re admission rate can anybody tell me what do you mean by readmission rate
any any understanding what do we mean by the word readmission rate no right it's very difficult to say what is the meaning of the word readmission not follow up patient returning in 7 days no how many patients are getting admitted again for the same disease but in what time frame but in what time frame chances of patient getting admitted again for the same disease or different disease within what time frame and so on so a typical readmission rate basically indicate basically indicate that you know no so a readmission rate is always calculated as an annual data okay so a readmission rate basically indicate that what percentage of my patients got readmitted for the same disease within a gap of one year from from the time they were discharged previously right from the time they were discharged previously so when i talk about when i talk about a readmission rate it basically shows me a very important so if a, if a hospital has a very high readmission rate can i go back and say that the treatment by the hospital was not very good can i go back and say whether the patients have a good trust on the hospital and don't know until and unless i don't go back into a hospital domain or a healthcare domain and i try to understand whether the high readmission rate is a good part for me or a low readmission rate is a good part for me i will never be able to analyze my data so until and unless i do not go back and try to understand the domain on which i am working or from where the data was getting produced i will never be able to analyze and interpret the outcome of that data and that's the reason the third vertical is very important which is known as domain understanding or domain knowledge now there is a counterpart to it of course you can't become a master of all the domains you can become a master of let's say two or three domains over a period of time as one as you know when you work in analytics industry but you can't definitely become the master of all the domains so then how do i go back and analyze the data of a domain which i have no clue about it so in those case you should also have a adaptability and you should also have a eager to go and work with the business leaders of that domain to understand that domain first and then start your analysis now these are the three pillar of any good skills which are required in data analytics technology statistics and domain knowledge if you have this three as a combination in you you can definitely become a good data analytics person in terms of going back and and working in this domain but when we talk about data analytics the last part which i wanted to touch up now before i take your q and a when we talk about data analytics you should also be very very clear about that in which domain of data analytics you want to make your career in a broader sense data analytics is divided into four different categories a descriptive analytics domain b diagnostic analytics domain c predictive analytics domain and d a prescriptive analytics domain now what does all this do when i talk about a descriptive analytics domain the first one there a typical person has to just analyze the data which is already produced in the past the data is available with the organization and he just need to go back analyze and tell what has happened in the organization in past so example i can just analyze my 10 years data or let's say i analyze my last 100 years data and i can tell you that yesterday in last 100 years it was the coldest morning in the month of may in bangalore yesterday morning the temperature of bangalore was 17.2 degree whereas the coldest morning in the month of may in bangalore was recorded back in 1945 where the temperature was 19.7 degree right used by md correct now this is just a 
uh, analysis of the past data. I have not done any rocket science. I have just gone and do a kind of a bit, bit, you know, uh, uh, understanding of my data from the past and then just bring up my insight from it that yesterday was the coldest morning in Bangalore in last hundred years. That is what we call it as sorry, descriptive analytics. We have then the second domain of analytics, which we call it as diagnostic analytics. Now, a diagnostic analytics helps uh, you to understand whatever has happened to you in the past, why it has happened. So it is it basically help you to understand the root cause analysis. We also call it as root cause analysis. So if I have to go back in terms of the diagnostic analysis, I have to go back and say, if yesterday was the coldest day in the month of May in Bangalore, why it was? Then I will go back and start working on, on the rain parameters, how much mm of rain we have received. Then I go back and start working on the cyclone parameters. I go back and start working on my climate changes in terms of uh, you know global warmings and so on. I try to diagnose it. And that's where, sorry, and that's where, you know, the, the second vertical of analytics comes into picture known as diagnostic analysis. We do also have then the third vertical of analytics known as predictive analytics. Now, the, the, the domain of predictive analytics basically means or the domain of predictive analytics basically reflect that whatever has happened to you in the past, if it continue to happen in the future, what will be your future? So as a part of predictive analytics, we use a lot of machine learning algorithms. We use a lot of models, mathematical models, and we then go back and you know, predict that if this was happening to me in the past, what could be my future? So let's say I wanted to predict if yesterday was the coldest, winter, coldest May, what could be the temperature next year on the same day, right? That comes as my predictive analytics. Then comes the third part, which is prescriptive analytics. Now, that's a most complicated analytics vertical. I, I would be very open to say that because that's the vertical where you have to go back and suggest your customer, how can you change your outcome of the future in your favorable mode? For example, let's say I have analyzed my past data and based on the past data, I predicted that by the end of this year, my company will cross only 80 crore as a revenue. But my ambition is to become a 100 crore company. Now, there is a gap of 20 crore. Now, I have to go back and again analyze the data and give the prescriptions. What actions you should take? So make sure that your future revenue crosses 100 crore. That's the fourth and the most complicated, complicated algorithm-based based analytics domain, which we call it as prescriptive analytics. So you need to understand your skills, and then you need to understand these four areas of data analytics, data science, in which you need to make your career. If you are good, most of the people start their journey from descriptive analytics, and then as they grow into into data analytics career, they become predictive analytics they expert, they become prescriptive analytic expert, they become diagnostic analytic experts, and so on. On this note, I'll now take up your queries or your questions in terms of understanding what our data analytics are all about and how the data analytics is changing the job scenario in the market. Again, to conclude my speech, there is a huge job opportunity available in data analytics domain, but then it's not a job for everyone. You have to have those three skills and you need to choose about these four domains of analytics in what you need to make your career. I'm open for your queries and your questions. Now, I have one question which I will take it first from, you know, just give me a second. There was a very interesting question from Babita, which says, uh, that means that we cannot do anything with in data science without statistics knowledge. You can do a little bit, I won't say much, you can do a little bit, but only in a descriptive analytic side, Babita. You won't be able to make your career grow into diagnostic, predictive, prescriptive analytics 
if you do not know statistics, right? All right, then I have few queries. Working a cross-functional team for a domain. Yes, work as a cross-functional team for a domain. Perfect. All right, I have a query from Shubham. Data scientists work in which vertical of an analytics? They don't work in any vertical of an analytics. As I showed you on my screen, screen data analytics itself is a horizontal vertical. So if you're working for data analytics, okay, you may be supporting a marketing domain. You may be supporting a finance vertical. You may be supporting XYZ vertical or so on. So they don't work in any of the business verticals, but they support, they can support any of the vertical. Now within data analytics, within data analytics, they are different vertical. For example, you may be a part of a predictive model. You may be a part of a database management. You may be a part of a data cleaning team. You may be a part of a visualization team and so on. So that depends on what is your skills. When you learn data analytics, what is your skills? If you are expert in visualization, like dashboard creations and all that stuff, you may go and become a part of a visualization team. If you are good in building predictive models, you may go and become a part of a machine learning teams and so on. Is it like a working in all vertical at the same time? Some of the people who have multiple expertise in data analytics, they work in all the verticals at the same time as well. Can an electric engineer become a data analytics? Yes, Ajit. An electric engineer can by me any means become a data analytics as long as you follow those three. Technology, statistics, domain. Right? Thank you, Mr. Ramit. Uh, this was really an insightful session. I'm sure all the attendees uh, had a lot of valuable takeaways. So uh, we have now reached the final part of our webinar and we will take you more questions uh, that we have from uh, the students. So sure. um, one of the questions states that after doing MBA, if I do a data science program, how will it help? Okay, now that's, that's a very, very interesting part. After doing MBA, if I do uh, data analytics, how is going to help? MBA gives you that very interesting domain understanding because I'm, I'm quite sure that when you go into the MBA, uh, you would have used a specialization which could be a marketing specialization or which could be a finance as a specialization or which could be an HR as a specializations and so on. Now, those specializations would definitely provide you a good understanding of a domain knowledge. How does a marketing domain work? How does a finance domain work? And so on, whatever is your specialization. Now going back, so being an MBA, a little bit part of knowing one of the skill, which is knowing a domain is already covered, right? So you don't have to really struggle when you go back and start applying analytics in those particular domain. And that's a biggest advantage when you work in a, when you work in a, you know, in a, in a data analytics after being your MBA. The second aspect of this is this, not all the data analytics people work in the back end. Right? Let's say for me, I'm, I'm working with KPMG where I'm a customer oriented professional. I'm a data analytics person. I know how to build the model. I know how to create the dashboards, but I'm still a customer facing expert or I'm still a customer facing person, which basically means a regular part of my job is to go back, interact with the customer, understand their requirement, and then propose them a solution. Now that is a very interesting part where you interact with the customer, which definitely have the slight advantage if you are an MBA grad. Because in an MBA, you definitely being taught about how do, do I do the customer calls? How do I go back and interact with the customers? How do I go back and understand the requirement? And then how do I map my solutions to those requirements? So that's 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 a two advantage which an MBA grads may get once they do the once they do the data analytics after completing their MBA. Great. Uh, so we have another question for, from one of our students, which states: uh, If I have five to six years of education gap and I'm starting a data science program now, so will I be able to learn all the tools and the modules covered in this particular domain? I did my data analytics, just to answer your question, I did my data analytics after having an eight years education gap 
because for eight years I was purely in the field of sales and marketing. And then after eight years, I turned my career into data analytics by learning a, a master's program in data analytics, implementing data analytics into my day to day job, and so on. There is no barrier. You only have an education gap, right? Which basically means you have been working somewhere or the other right now. So you have, you have a good understanding of the domain, practical understanding of the domain in whichever the area you are working. Like for me, when I converted myself into data analytics, the first thing I did, I went back and started working into marketing domain because I was working for eight years in marketing domain. So I could apply all my concept of data analytics into marketing domain to make a career in a marketing domain as a data analytics specialist. And that has actually helped me a lot in my entire journey of 16 years career. It has helped me a lot in terms of becoming an expert, in terms of marketing campaign optimization, in terms of designing marketing campaigns, optimizing the lead flows and all that stuff by purely bringing data science into marketing. So don't worry if you have an educational gap, it all depends on one's learning ability. And I do believe that you have a learning ability irrespective whether you have a gap in your education or not, it shouldn't be a challenge for you. Great. Uh, thank you, Mr. Amit. I mean, uh, this was a really insightful session. I'm sure all the attendees have a lot of valuable takeaways. Uh, so, yeah, for all our students who are planning to pursue data science, you all can find the scholarship uh, link below in the chat box. We here at RISE have curated a program that will allow everyone to get the opportunity to become a data scientist. Now, uh, we have come uh, to the end of our webinar. Thank you, everyone, for joining in. Thank you, Mr. Amit, for your time. That's all for today's webinar. Thanks, everyone. Take care. And it was nice talking to you all. Thank you.